movieweb.com. I have a couple of questions I want to ask you, and the first one is about the seeds. Now, I don't know if you listen to a lot of AM radio, but late at night I've been hearing this commercial come on about the importance of keeping and saving the seeds because soon it's going to be a commodity like gold. And I'm wondering, can you speak about that and tell us what's sort of going on with the seed industry? Well, I think, like everything in the food world, uh, there's been a great consolidation. Uh, there are few corporations that are producing our food. We're making fewer and fewer products. Even though you go into the supermarket and there could be 47,000 things you see in the supermarket, 90% of them contain corn and soy. Uh, so we're basically falling into a culture. It's monoculture. Uh, fewer corporations, fewer products. Uh, the diversity of seeds is a, an essential thing that we need more t variables or we need more variations of uh, different crops, different types of corn, different types of tomatoes. Uh, and what we have is Monsanto basically saying, you know, we want to sell you Roundup Ready soy. Uh, they had something like 2% of the marketplace in the mid-90s, and now they're up to 90% of the marketplace. One company selling you one kind of seed. Uh, I don't think that's healthy for the environment to have one company and one seed uh, that dominant. Uh, and they're doing everything to discourage other kinds of crops from being grown. So there is like a possibility that these seeds that they're telling us to save now could disappear. I mean, that's actually a legitimate concern within the farming community? Oh, right now, these basically, we are using very, very few products. I mean, I think it's happened. Uh, and it's not a healthy situation. Uh, and it's being absolutely encouraged by the large corporations like Monsanto, or I shouldn't say being encouraged, it's they're using teams of lawyers to make sure it happens so that they can have absolute domination over the marketplace. And now, with the independent farmer, how difficult is it for them to keep their operation going? Because you sort of bring this up in the film about these, like, bigger conglomerates coming in and just kind of wiping them out. Is there any chance of an actual person who wants to be a farmer in this day and age becoming a farmer and becoming productive from that? I think uh, there was just an article in the New York Times that young kids are... Uh, well, I'll start again. But I, I think... Um, there's certainly been a swing towards, you know big, big, big agribusiness dominating the farm marketplace. Uh, but I'm very hopeful that we're going to develop some more small farmers who are producing healthy food that we want to eat. Uh, I think that there's a chance because I think it's going to take the consumer who gets to vote three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner to start demanding good, healthy food. Uh, and the more we demand it, the more there'll be a need for small farmers. And even the large farmers that we have in our film who are producing industrial food that they know is not good for us, they are desperate to try to want to grow good food. So they're saying, they're reaching out to us saying, if you help demand it, if you create a demand, we want to grow the good, healthy food. Uh, so I think it, it happens, it, it will come on two levels, it, you know, it's the power of the consumer to start to uh, go to their supermarkets and ask for this food, as well as a, uh, for us to help try to influence uh, those in government to create an even fair playing field so that the, uh, the Happy Meal isn't just subsidizing, you know, it's cheaper than the broccoli because we're subsidizing it. And we need to figure out how to get healthy food being sold at a fair price so that poor families uh, can afford this, uh, what we call, you know, healthy food that's going to, you know, keep them from having to go on medicines. Right now we have a food system uh, where we have, you know, very inexpensive food uh, but this low-cost food is coming to us at a very high cost. Uh, our health bills are going to be skyrocketing. One-third out of all Americans 
are going to have early onset diabetes, those people born after the year 2000. This is something, you know, that's going to cost us a fortune. So this low-cost food is just too expensive for us. It's going to destroy the planet. Uh, you know, we're polluting incredible amounts of chemicals are going into the earth and to the water. So we, we can't drink the water in certain states for most parts of the year. Um, and consumers are getting sick. We're just not getting the nutrition from this food we used to get. Uh, so we have to figure out how to create a system that uh, is a lot sort of healthier for us and ultimately will be a lot less expensive because of those invisible costs we're now paying and we're just starting to learn about. Well, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories per se, but I'm just interested to know. I mean, do you think there's a connection between like the people, uh, the people that are pushing medicine and the food industry to kind of get together and create this like avenue to where they're selling more medicine? I don't know if I put yeah. it that right. Yeah, I think that ultimately, agribusiness is interested in their bottom line uh, and. They'll do anything. They have to figure out how to get us to eat more calories per day so that they can make more money. And ultimately, selling us sugar, salt, and fat, which appeals to us, uh, sort of our genetic senses, uh, and spending billions of dollars to convince us this is fun to do, uh, is what, what happens. I don't think there's any sort of conspiracy other than wanting to make money. Uh, and unfortunately, it's at uh, the cost of our health and the cost of the planet's health. Um, but I'm optimistic we can change the system because it's very similar to that of tobacco. Uh, tobacco basically uh, was an incredibly powerful lobby, well connected to government, and they put out much false information about their product. I think the food system is, again, very powerful and again putting out false information about their product. Uh, but I think we as consumers, uh, we change tobacco and I think we can change this food system. Okay, and I'll ask you one last question. I'm interested to know, at the end of the credit sequence, you bring up the fact that at farmer's markets, they should take the food stamps. And I'm wondering, what is the problem with people at farmer's markets not taking food stamps and how does taking food stamps benefit them in the long run? Them being the, the the people that work in the farmers market. Well, that we, you know, basically, we're trying to create. Uh, basically, what I think we want is a system where the broccoli can compete with the Happy Meal, where the the tomatoes and the apples get a fair shake. Right now, we're subsidizing food that's making us sick, and if we can start to create a fair playing field so that healthy feel healthy food has the same chance as this industrial food, we're going to all be a lot healthier and it's going to save all of us a lot of money. Okay. Was this a message to the people, the farmers that go to the farmer's market to accept this? No, 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 no. This is, it's a message. We want, we want the government to encourage a system where uh, people can use their food stamps okay. for healthy food. We also want, you know, what happened in traveling around the country when I, I saw things that just made me sick, uh, the downer cattle that you see in our film, where is it going? It's going to the National School Lunch Program. Food that you wouldn't want anyone to eat, that's what's going to be fed to our children. Uh, something's wrong, and I, I think it's time that we have to change the system, and Food Inc. sort of leads you to figure out how we can change the system, and, and it's going to be led, this revolution is going to be led by moms who want their their little kids to get good food, and uh, it's going to cut all sort of boundaries. You know, it's not about liberals or Democrats or Republicans. It's about uh, you know moms who want healthy food for their kids. And I think we're going to change the system like we changed tobacco. People have got to start demanding good wholesome food of us, and we'll deliver. I promise you.